Hello, Salu, Anin, Tansi, Tungisugit. Welcome to an accessible English language backgrounder with assisted visual descriptions on Together There, a creative thought residency on digital justice and the arts in Canada. Bienvenue à une introduction à Ensemble là-bas, une résidence de réflexion créative sur la justice numérique et les arts au Canada. La langue de la session est aujourd'hui l'anglais. Les sous-titres en français seront bientôt disponibles. A visual description of this opening slide features a very light gray background with a graphic in the center placed above the presentation title that evokes the feeling of a somewhat strange social media news feed. Eight square tiles are spread out somewhat irregularly across four columns and two rows. The tiles have earthy background colors, including purple, orange, green, and blue. Inside these tiles are white logos that resemble stick figures or markers on a map, if they resemble anything at all. Amongst the tiles are circles and lines that are stroked or filled with light gray, like place markers awaiting something new. At the top right of the graphic, there is a gray circle that resembles an open button with a plus sign inside it. A smaller circle is also attached to the top of it, overlapping, perhaps like the avatar of a rotund digital human, if you can imagine it. My name is Jessa Aguilo, and I'm the founder of Together There and ArtsPond Etandar, which is incubating this new effort. Together There would not have been possible without the very generous support of Canada Council for the Arts Digital Strategy Fund, which has also provided essential funding for several other of our digital initiatives. I would also like to acknowledge and thank the support of the Government of Canada and City of Toronto, who have generously funded some of our other activities. I'm open to hearing from you anytime if you have thoughts about what you'd like to see from our organization in the future. Or if you have questions about Together There and how you might like to be involved, please feel free to reach out to me at jessa.artspond.com. You can also visit our website and under the You menu, choose the option Explore with Jessa. There you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one meetup with me where we can talk about really anything you would like. The direct link is artspond.com slash explore with Jessa. Those last three words are hyphenated. A visual description of this slide includes a circle on the left side with my photograph inside it. I'm a white transgender woman with a shaved head. In this image, I'm wearing blue textured glasses with a black top on a very light yellowish green background. My head is tilted to one side and I'm leaning forward looking towards you. Behind me, there is a visual graphic of three overlapping gray lines of different thicknesses moving from the left to the right. They resemble sound waves or ripples on water. In between these ripples are circles filled with yellowish green, purple, and blue. They are of different sizes with the largest yellow-green circle placed at the top of the thickest wave, somewhat akin to a rising sun. Before proceeding, it is essential we acknowledge that here at Arts Pond, we live, work, meet, and travel on the traditional territories of Indigenous peoples, that have cared for this land now called Canada since time immemorial. Specifically, we reside on Treaty 13 or Tikaranto, which are the traditional territories of the Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas of the Credit, a part of the Dish with One Spoon territory shared peacefully among Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, and allied nations who bound themselves to care for the resources around the Great Lakes. On the left side of this slide that holds our acknowledgement, there is an image with a blue curvy line moving from the top to the bottom. Above, below, and on either side of this curving line, there is a sprinkling of circles and squares that are filled or stroked with different colors, including green, purple, orange, blue, and gray. The agenda for today includes four elements. One, who are we? A grounding in the vision and story of the pond. Two, why digital? What has drawn us so strongly to the digital world? What are some of the projects we've been working on that have helped lead us to together there? Three, 
what is happening now. Here we'll go into lots of detail about what's coming up for the Together There project. And finally, four, how can you get involved? Here we'll talk about the specifics and all the questions you might have for the curators and working leads job opportunities that are currently available to help you decide if they are a good fit for you. For those of you who may not be that familiar, I would like to take a few moments now to ground you in the vision and story of the pond thus far. Outwardly, we may appear as a different kind of ASO, or Arts Service, Arts Support Organization. Inwardly, we do not relate with either of these words support or service that strongly. They feel somewhat inadequate as descriptors of what we do. Their accountabilities just aren't quite weighty enough. Instead of support or service, the symbiotic duo of caregiver and changemaker feels closer to who we are. Our mandate is to nurture healthy ecosystems of care that bolster multidimensional remedies and therapies to the complex realities of systemic precarity faced by so many equity-seeking groups. In our work, this results in intersectional efforts to advance social, spatial, economic, ecological, digital, and accessibility justice in human, virtual, and natural life. We do so by fostering cooperative actions using the values and wisdom of social innovation and community-engaged arts. Our vision is to embody a world where arts workers from the margins are valued each and supported all for their ingenuity as positive deviants that both challenge and bind our communities together. A visual description of the graphic on this slide features a very light gray background with three flowing lines of slightly different thicknesses and shades of gray. Two of the lines move like water from the left to the right, while the third, a fishing line, drops to the bottom after interacting with the other two. Each of the lines navigate several different sized twists or curly cues, turning back in on themselves before moving on again. These twists are filled with different colors, including white, blue, green, orange, and purple. They evoke, perhaps, strings of colored lights or little underwater creatures glowing with cheerful luminescence. There are three larger circles placed above and in between these lines in a V-shape that are filled with solid colors, including purple, yellow, green, and blue. As a young organization, our first decade since 2014 has revolved around a plan we call Share Well Vivier Bien. Its focus is to cultivate equity with, by, and for the arts through four streams, including social, spatial, digital, and fiscal concerns. We tie this plan to 12 of the United Nations' 17 SDGs, or Sustainable Development Goals, for 2030. These goals are an invitation to rally all of humanity together to address the urgent threats to our society and our planet. For us, we connect to such goals as no poverty, good health and well-being, quality education, decent work and economic growth, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities, climate action, and others. Official description of this slide includes a circle on the left sliced into two sections vertically. On the left section, there are 12 tiles of different colors with white icons, texts, and numbers inside them for each of the SDGs. On the right section, there are five tiles representing Arts Pond's focus areas in blue, green, white, orange, and purple. On the bottom right, below the title of the plan, is an illustration of the tops of a few tree branches in light gray, black, blue, and green solid colors. We have come a long way since 2014. I would like to share briefly some of our emergent thinking in the lead up to the release of our second decade plan in 2024, tentatively titled Give Care, Soin de Partage. This plan features four essential seeds, 
Create, engage, share, and care. Create is our seed for the artist. Here, we wish to work directly and deeply with creators in order to better empower the values and wisdom of their creativity and their contributions to the social cohesion and well-being of our communities. Engage is our seed for the audience and patrons of our creators. Through our work, we wish to amplify public attitudes that nurture the vitality of thriving cultural economies, attracting and sustaining more financial support for our creators. Share is a seed for our change makers. Here we wish to work towards deepening beliefs in the opportunity and benefit of cooperation, where collective communities working together can better bolster access for equity-seeking groups who are too often left out in the cold. Care is our seed for the system. Here we wish to work to help realize behaviors that sustain ecosystems of care, not only for us humans in our digital and real lives, but for all living things on our planet. A visual description of this slide features a light gray background with logos for each of the four seeds in two rows and two columns. The create logo is blue, engage is orange, green for share, and purple for care. Each logo is represented by a circle with an icon inside it. The create icon is a thick looping line attached to the bottom of its circle with one smaller stroked circle inside the loop. The engage icon is the same loop as the create icon, but rotated to the right slightly with a second thinner line joining it in parallel and a filled instead of a stroked circle inside the loop. The share icon looks like a pair of eyes with a single looping line connected to both the top and bottom of its outward circle and two smaller circles, one stroked and one filled inside the loops. The care icon is the same as share, but with the eyes rotated vertically and a second thinner line joining it in parallel. From these four elemental seeds, we have identified seven key perspectives. Under the create seed is action. Under engage seed is equity and ecology. Under share seed is impact and culture. And care seed is justice and process. From these four elemental seeds, we have identified seven key perspectives. Under the create seed is action. Under engage seed is equity and ecology. Under share seed is impact and culture. And care seed is justice and process. From these seven perspectives, we have then identified 63 individual priorities to help structure and keep an eye on our impact long term. Under action, there are four strategies, including ecosystem building, knowledge building, platform building, and co-creation labs. Under equity, there are 10 priority groups. In ecology, there are 10 professions and industries. In impact, there are 12 commitments to the global sustainable development goals, which we've discussed earlier. Under culture, there are 11 groups, organizations, and traditions we are committed to amplifying. There are 11 wise practices under process that guide our efforts. And under justice are the six intersectional responses that drive our efforts to uproot the precarity of arts workers. This multidimensional and somewhat complex infographic attempts to summarize how our individual actions connect back to these 63 priorities. Here, inside the circle holding the 63 priorities, you see two of our spatial justice projects, Ground Story in blue and Ground Trust in green. Green and blue overlapping lines reaching from the center outwards help denote which priorities these two projects connect to. Thicker lines are more important connections than thinner lines. For a written description about this graphic, please see our website blog and look for Enterprise of Care Part 2. 
Moving on from our first question, who are we? I'd like to shift gears now and discuss our second, why digital? While a pivot to digital only became a big concern for many as a result of the pandemic, globally, digital transformation has been a force to reckon with for many years. Here at The Pond, we have followed four strategic perspectives in an effort to cultivate more accessible and inclusive and equitable digital solutions with, by, and for the arts community. They include the four actions we just spoke about, ecosystem, knowledge, and platform building, as well as co-creation labs. Digital ASO is a national ecosystem and knowledge building effort using participatory roundtables and co-creation labs as a strategy to invite community input into the question, what does a positive digital future look like to you? And secondarily, what is the role of digital art services in helping us get there? Hatch Open is a new open source arts management software platform focused on financial management, impact investing, and ecosystem mapping, while Artsy United is a proposed platform cooperative for gig economy workers and small to medium sized enterprises that will be powered by Hatch Open. A visual description for this slide features logos for each of the three projects. The logo for Digital ASO resembles a DVD or compact disc with horizontal bands of color in green, purple, blue, and orange. The Hatch Open logo is a purple tile with a white H and O inside it. The H resembles a tap where the O is perhaps a droplet of water coming out of the H or a power button that is attached to it. The logo for Arts United is a lime green tile with a white looping figure inside it that resembles a heart. Digital ASO was co-founded with my good friend and colleague, Margaret Lamb. In 2017, our first activity was managing creativity in a digital world. This national survey of gig workers and small arts organizations sought to understand the digital software and digital support needs of the arts community into the future. The results helped lead to the first edition of the Digital Arts Services Symposium in Toronto and Ottawa in 2017. It sought to answer the question, what is a digital arts services organization, or DASO? This was followed by a larger second edition of the symposium in 2019. With a theme of All Digits on Deck, it featured international speakers from the United States, Australia, United Kingdom, and across Canada. Phase two of Digital ASO since late 2020 has explored whether a national digital arts services alliance might help to steward a positive digital future in the arts community. An upcoming report on this work is titled, So Far, Collective Steps Towards a Positive Digital Future in Canadian Arts and Culture. In the next three slides, I would like to share some visual recordings that document a few insights from our digital ASO roundtables. Here, for example, in the north, the lack of accessible infrastructure is identified as a clear barrier for rural and remote communities. There, the availability, quality, and costs of digital infrastructure, such as weather-dependent satellite-only internet for some, is a far cry from what is possible in larger suburban and metropolitan centers in the south. The visual recording shown on the screen here is a beautiful hand-drawn image with lots of colors, text, and sketches summarizing key issues expressed by arts and culture workers from the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. In Western Canada, dual-edged connections between the dreams and disasters of our digital lives came to the fore. Here, the thorny and difficult, yet also encouraging and hopeful truce and not truce of technology were seen as both promises that are too good to be true and creative wishes filled with opportunity. 
opportunities, for example, to co-develop platforms that are accessible from the start or communicate what is possible through collective digital action, connection, and care. The visual recording shown here is a beautiful hand-drawn image. A knot tied between two ropes cuts diagonally from the bottom left to the top right. There is a blue rope for true and an orange rope for not true. In between, above, and below these ropes are texts and sketches that summarize key issues from this roundtable. In a creative workshop with Indigenous and racialized artists of color, participants here also explored some early thoughts on this essential question, what the heck is digital justice anyway? Nazma Ahmed from the Digital Justice Lab in Toronto introduced participants to the principles of digital justice developed by the Detroit Digital Justice Coalition. These principles include access, participation, common ownership, and healthy communities. Digital inequities that were identified include access, both physical and navigational, the lack of privacy and overwhelming digital surveillance in personal and public space, and the exploitive, extractive practices of big tech who take advantage of low-paid labor in the gig economy to realize unprecedented profits. Participants finally discussed potential paths to a just digital future, which included commitments to collective imagination and solidarity as a means to realize policy changes that recognize digital access as a human right. The graphic recording showing on the screen is another beautiful hand-drawn image with texts and sketches of key issues from this workshop in blue, pink, purple, red, and black. So how do we go about now actualizing in our lifetimes this positive, equitable, digital world, whatever that may mean? And what are the roles of our support services real world, virtual, or otherwise, to help us all not only get there, but remain there. Finding answers to such questions is, in our opinion, the true key to our collective vitality and sustainability. We must solve these questions without doing further harm to our communities or our planet. To do so, we must be prepared to rely on the creativity and respect for difference that our equity-seeking caregivers are so well positioned to offer and yet are so rarely listened to. To do so, we must be ready to challenge and abolish digital systems of oppression while providing real-world alternatives that show the way to a better future in our built and natural worlds. It is the emergent digital ASO knowledge framework currently displayed on screen, which strives to set out community sourced insights in response to these and other concerns. Released as a preview in fall 2021, this framework is visualized as a multi-dimensional Venn diagram with steps to a positive digital future grouped into three themes. One, fostering bridges, cultivating trust in blue, two, building up wise practices in purple, and three, advancing a just society in green. It is this last theme, advancing a just society, that offers us the most promise and intrigue prior to the launch of Together There, including rights etiquette, language, autonomy, and access, digital ASO participants identified elementary and profound understandings of what a just digital future can and needs to be in arts and culture. With all of you, it is our hope that Together There will now dive more deeply into finding new understandings as our next collective step. For a more detailed visual description and discussion of the Digital ASO knowledge framework, please visit digitalaso.ca or artspond.com and search for on the blog the Digital ASO knowledge framework preview. Having cultivated some common ground amongst us, we are ready to move on to our third agenda question, what is happening now with Together There? Put simply, Together There is designed as a digital-first, multi-year creative thought residency and international exchange that seeks to seed creative, 
mindful, and thought-provoking visions of a just and caring digital ecosystem, all led with, by, and for equity-seeking groups in Canadian arts and culture. Before proceeding any further, let's unpack some of these words and concepts to help clarify for you what they mean to us. Equity-seeking groups for this project includes four priority communities, one, Indigenous people, two, racialized Black, Brown, and other people of color, three, outside the core, including suburban, rural, and remote communities, and four, deaf, blind, neurodivergent, and other disabled people. Individuals with intersectional identities and backgrounds that span more than one of these or other diverse groups are most welcome to participate. For example, 2S LGBTQ+, New Canadians, youth, women, gig economy workers, official language minorities, and other diverse communities that also belong to one or more of our four main priority groups are all encouraged to participate. As a point of clarification, in a digital world, outside the core is not necessarily limited to its geographic definition. For example, a systemically oppressed artist who cannot afford to pay for modern devices or internet access and yet lives or works near a major geographic center may be faced with some of the same digital restrictions and limitations as a rural or remote worker. From this sense, this artist would operate outside the core digitally and would be encouraged to join together there. For this effort, Canadian arts and culture is inclusive of all disciplines and professions from the artistic and cultural industries. This includes artists, curators, educators, managers and producers from the visual, urban and public arts, sound performing and media arts, literary and community arts, publishing, motion pictures, craft museums, galleries, artist-run centers, and other arts and culture groups. The phrase digital first also has several important implications for together there. Given the challenges we continue to face in the real world due to the pandemic, and given our access to limited resources and funding, this effort will prioritize collaboration and information sharing through digital first streams. However, digital first is not meant to imply digital only. This is an essential commitment for us to support those who cannot reliably access digital tools online. For example, Participants will be invited as they are able to connect digitally with Together There through both synchronous and asynchronous collaboration tools online, such as Miro, Slack, Discord, Gather.town, Zoom, SharePoint, Google, and more. All participants will also be invited to explore other lo-fi alternatives to communicate and share their ideas, such as texting, mailing postcards, sharing memes and GIFs, creating simple paper-based animations and videos, exploring radio, and more. The tools to ultimately be used by this effort will be selected collaboratively by the participants. And finally, the concept of a creative thought residency comes from our core belief that the life experiences and wisdom of impacted people needs to be better valued and heard as essential keys towards a more inclusive, diverse, equitable and accessible future. Part intimate experiment, part intentional study group or seminar, and part immersive co-creation lab, the goal of a creative thought residency is to bring diverse communities together to co-design alternative visions of a positive future through the integration of both personal and shared critical thinking and artistic expression. We launched together there with a creative thought residency from June to December 2022. Pre-planning with residency curators and working leads begins in mid-March to early April. The residency will hire between 10 to 15 arts workers to explore both individual and collective expressions of a just and caring digital future in a fun, collaborative, and participatory environment. Anticipated activities include, in June, setting group intentions and sharing basic foundations on digital justice. In July, a month for resident self-reflection and learning. 
in August, coming back together as a group to learn more about their fellow residents and cultivate a safe and trusting environment for the remainder of the residency. In September and October, a variety of weekly or bi-weekly experiments and guest speakers to help residents narrow in on topics of interest. In November, validating personal and group insights on these topics, including an invitation to share what has been learned at public workshops that are planned for this time period. And in December, finalizing thoughts and ideas in creative collaterals and other expressions that can be shared with the public as a conclusion to the residency. In the months that follow, an Omnimedia designer will help bring all of these creative ideas, thoughts, and expressions together and publish them as a digital resource for the community. As a point of clarification, we have no preconceptions about the types of digital justice topics that residents may wish to explore. We have no preconceptions either of how they might express what they come to as a part of the residency. Our primary motivation is to foster a place of trust, safety, and comfort in a very uncertain and impressive world. And from this moment, help participants dive more deeply into their experiences and explore their curiosities for insights on how to realize a more caring and just digital future. The next phase of activities for Together There will feature free public workshops from September to December 2022. In September, we will share an introduction to digital justice issues in arts and culture. In October, a participatory workshop will help attendees explore what digital justice means to them in their own lives and ecosystems. In November, together their staff and participants will be invited to share their own personal lessons with the public. In December, we will discuss next steps for advancing digital justice with, by, and for the arts and culture sector, including upcoming plans for the symposium in 2023. The last major component of Together There is a symposium on digital justice in winter or spring 2023. The content, structure, and themes of the symposium is still to be determined in collaboration with the curators. As a digital gathering, we have options for a structure. We could take a more traditional approach with an intensive collection of events over two or three days. We could take a more distributed approach with weekly events, say, on Wednesdays for a few months. Or we could take a mixture of these two with an intensive one-day event and then a series of regular events over a period of time. Our preference is for a free conference, but there may be a mixture of ticketed and free events, depending on the costs of the content we are to deliver. Our desired content includes keynote presentations, panels, participatory workshops and co-creative labs where attendees can be actively engaged in an unconference or human-centered design type of event. We have a budget to hire approximately 36 international guest speakers, so it should be an exciting event. I would like to conclude this background on Together There with a discussion of our fourth and final question, how can you get involved? There are lots of job opportunities currently available, They include four creative thought residency curators, four symposium curators, and four working leads. Calls for thought residency participants and symposium guests will be disseminated after these positions are filled. You can see all the job postings currently available at artspond.com slash jobs. It is our preference that we receive applications for the residency curators and working leads before March 1st, 2022, and the symposium curators before April 15th, 2022. While the positions will remain open until filled, we wish to begin onboarding symposium curators by mid-May to early June, and the thought residency curators and working leads by mid-March to early April of 2022. We will accept applications after these informal deadlines, but the postings will be removed from our website once they have been filled. We are very excited to be able to hire 12 amazing new people to join our team. Ultimately, we are seeking a team of people that can help deliver the overall vision for the programming we have outlined. While there are specific duties and responsibilities that we hope curators will be able to offer, we are not expecting that any one individual would be an expert in all of them. From our perspective, it is fabulous if you are indeed interested and skilled at all of them. It is equally wonderful, however, if you are more interested and skilled at just one or two. When you apply, 
Let us know which areas you're the most interested in, and we will factor it into our team building considerations. There are three major responsibilities for both the symposium and residency curators. The first, program design, is creative and strategic. The second, participant recruitment and selection, is oriented around public outreach and team building. The third, participant mentorship and support, is focused on strategies for personal and professional care of participants. For example, program design will prioritize planning the overall journey of the participants. What types of questions and issues will participants be asked to explore? What types of knowledge resources will they be able to access? How will different points of view be encouraged both individually and collectively? What topics might be fruitful areas for experimentation? What types of tools will help bring participants together? When there are hiccups, how will we respond and learn from them? For the residency, the most intensive period for program design will take place between March and July 2022. This will be followed by check-ins thereafter to review and make tweaks as necessary based on the participant experience. For the symposium, the most intensive period for program design will take place between August and October 2022. Participant recruitment and selection shifts focus towards the promotion of IDEA, inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. For example, how do we ensure calls for thought residents and symposium guests are inclusive and accessible for the priority groups we have identified? Who should receive these postings? How do we make decisions about who will be accepted? For those selected, how do we honor their experience by providing a safe and welcoming environment for onboarding that clearly states what is expected of them? The most intensive period for residency participant selection will be in late April to early June. For the symposium, the most demanding period for guest selection will be between November 2022 and February 2023. The last priority for curators, participant, mentorship, and support will focus on the design of personal and professional-wise practices and standards for care. In these uncertain times, how will we cultivate a safe and welcoming learning journey for all the participating equity-seeking groups? What practices can be implemented to help foster and sustain trust between staff, participants, attendees, and the public? Curators will be primarily responsible for designing strategies that the working leads and other support staff can then implement. As problems arise, the working leads and support staff can come back to the curators for advice and recommendations on how to change or evolve the process. If you're selected as a curator, we will work closely with you to define a scope of work that values your contributions in the context of the flat fee we are able to offer. We will clearly outline all your responsibilities and schedules months in advance so you will know what to expect. The working leads are responsible for supporting both the Creative Thought Residency and Symposium in three major categories. The first, knowledge seeking and stewardship, is both creative and wise. The second, participant liaising and support, is focused on communications and logistics support for participants. The third, public outreach and administration, requires skill in marketing and project management. For example, Knowledge seeking includes undertaking personal research on digital issues of interest and contributing to the progression of overall dialogue shared by the participants with the support of the curators. Knowledge stewardship is a grandmother role where the stories and insights of participants are well documented and shared back in a positive feedback loop that respectfully validates and reinforces the learning journeys of participants. Participant liaising and support shifts attention towards logistics and care to ensure that all participants understand the scope and timelines of the project and that their personal and professional needs are considered and attended to. For example, working leads will ensure participants know where to find files and information about the project, when meetings are happening, and what is expected of them. Mindful care and attention are prerequisites for engaging equity-seeking groups facing the impacts of systemic oppression in their real and digital lives. With the support of curators, working leads will implement strategies to ensure all participant dialogues are focused on respect for the multitudes of difference in our communities. 
The last priority, public outreach and administration, is focused on the design of effective marketing communications to help inform and engage the public and general administration tasks to keep the project moving forward. Working Leads will work on a flexible schedule from March of 2022 until spring 2023, once the symposium has been concluded. Compensation will be provided at a living wage based on their levels of experience. Do you need to have knowledge or experience in digital justice to be hired for this project? The quick answer is no. However, it will be ideal if at least half of the curators and working leads have some knowledge or passion or experience in digital issues to help lead the project forward. Thank you so much for your support and care. This concludes our background on Together There. Please feel free to reach out at any time if you have questions about the project or would like to discuss more about how you might be involved. Have a great day.